Yo, it's your boy Double Nine, man. Real fly shit. Here at Put On Work Studios, man. Shout out to Rob. Shout out to Chad, man. I'm about to do this interview. A lot of fly shit. I'm about to, you know what I'm saying? Church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Welcome to Put On Work TV. We've enjoyed watching your journey and growth as an artist slash creator in the New England scene. And really want to hear more about your story. Our focus is allowing our guests to tell their stories front and center without judgment or opinion. Let's dive straight to fucking how did it all begin? Where does 009 fly, 009 fly? Where does that come from? That sounds like a superhero movie with a cool agent, fast cars, some guns, uh, beautiful a, woman. a beautiful woman. Multiple beautiful. Getting into near near death experiences Multiple. in a fly car, Multiple doing dirt, getting money for it. Tell me. I mean, you said it all. <laughs> um, well, Double O Nine Fly. That's just an Instagram name. Most me. definitely. The theme is Double O Nine. I'm Double O Nine. The fly shit is it's Double O Nine. Um, <clears throat> I'll tell you the truth, man. I've always been just. A fan of art and uh, all the different forms of media, you know what I mean? Fly shit, as I would put it. Um, and there's different forms, you know, from paintings to to, to photography to just the aesthetic of, of buildings or furniture, cars, um, fashion. Um, so I've always been just super observant and um, appreciative of those forms, even though I didn't know specifically uh, what I wanted to do with it. You know, I liked it, I appreciated it, so I just consumed it. It really started with uh, producing. I was in I was in school, so it was like 2015, and I heard a Travis Scott song, and then I was like, "Yo!" <clears throat> I was in the car. We was all smoking. Um, Yo, this beat is dope. I'm, I'm thinking this to myself. This beat is dope. Like, I want to look up who made it. So I looked up who made the, the beat, Team 88, and I looked up a lot of other beats that he produced. And I was like, "Yo, I really like his style. I like all this." I was like, "Yo, like, if a nigga made this." I can do it too. So then I looked up how to, you know what I'm saying? I asked my friends that made beats, yo, what do I need to make beats? What do you need a computer? So I bought a computer to give me a pro. It started from that. Just real interest in uh, seeing art in all its forms. And it really started with making beats. Then, you know what I mean? Just borrowing my friend's camera, getting into photography, buying Polaroids. Um, to, you know, in high school, I took a film class. So that kind of gave me an appreciation of film more and understanding film, being able to break them down and understand the real themes, you know? Instead of just all the action and the cool stuff that you see in the film, the effects, you know, really understanding, like, the, the story and the structure. And then that kind of thing turns into, like, you know, when it's time for me to make content for myself, I kind of already have an understanding of all the great things in the past that have worked that's part of, you know, this modern era of, of digital art, you would say. <clears throat> you know, we've seen a, a lot of cool stuff, you know, from the early 2010s to, that's our generation, you know, um, again, from the music to photography to fashion, so I've just been able to take all those things. And, Back then, Pitbull was still rocking. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I was still going on. Um, so then it got to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm interested in all these things, I, I dabble a little bit in graphic design, I have a lot of connections. I want to portray myself this way. Um, I needed an alter ego. I needed a name for it. And that's where 009 came in. Um, I'm obviously a huge fan of the James Bond series. Um, and I guess I really just took inspiration from 007 and what it meant and what he had going on. And I, I really un appreciated and understood the films on a deeper level. Um, but you I, didn't just do that, you gave it a twist too. Because you probably assume the first connotation people had getting 009 is 007. Right, right. But the 00, 009 can embody <clears throat> your alter ego, and the fly is the Instagram, it's, it's how you present yourself to the outside world with right. your capabilities. You're right. So the first thing they see is 009 fly. Right, so you played with a little bit of psychology to make people have to accept you for 009 and for what it means about you instead of immediately thinking of James Bond. Right. Because it won't allow them understanding of your art. So that's going to tie into my second question is 
Sorry How for does, answer. <laughs> don't be sorry for nothing. You talk as long as you want. We're here to share our opinions and share our minds. So, what was it like growing up where you're from? I'm from Oakland, California. Um, born and raised. I moved out here for elementary school. And West here, Side. You, huh? you were born. Oh on the yeah, West, West Side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oakland, California. You repping that tough because anybody who comes from the West Side is the most proud. Like they're so they're so prideful of that. Yeah, bro. I mean, if my mom will tell, I lived in a couple different neighborhoods, but the neighborhood I lived in the longest that I remember as like a, a young child. You know what I mean? I was, I was outside going to the parks, riding my bike, whatever. So I was cognizant. Um, I really remember, you know, 52nd Street and just the houses and the neighborhood, you know, it was a cool time. Um, I first moved to Randolph, then Milton, went to high school in Milton. And wow, you did? What high school in Milton? Um, Milton, Milton High. So I, I went yeah, to Milton High? Huh? Yeah, I didn't go to the academy. Oh, okay. Uh, most definitely not. <laughs> I yeah, went yeah. to um, Milton High, too. And for the record, I don't live in Milton. I'm just not going to say <laughs> Yeah, girl. we know how people feel about that. You tell them. You know, you for the sake story. of uh, operational security, um, <laughs> part of the brand. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, it was cool, bro. I mean, you know, meeting different people and, and just seeing different ways of life. You know, New England has its own culture. And then with that, you know, uh, the new lifestyle and... You know, it's just, it was cool. I was always good at making friends. I'm the only child, so I was used to having to navigate the world to, to do what I needed to do. You know what I mean? That's a fact. Yeah. And so how does music <clears throat> alter or impact your life? And I like to say it another way. What does it do to enhance your experience at life? We have five sensory, uh, we have five forms of sensory, right? So yes. Yeah. Touch, sight, uh, hearing, taste, and smell. Smell, good. Forgot that one. <laughs> um, so music is just like it's it, at, at its base level. It's a form of expression. Someone made it. Someone liked it. They put it out there. Um, for me, it's a form of expression. It's also like a, a mental sanctuary. You know what I mean? There are just certain sounds that are like super pleasing to me. Um, and I mean, ultimately that determines my taste in music because I don't really care how good the rapper is. If the beat's not good, I'm not going to listen to it. So, you know, back to... Finally, the, somebody who's told the truth. Well, I mean... People don't admit that ever. I mean, I, I can appreciate how good the rapper is, but I personally won't have him as my favorite because part of that artistry is being able to find good sounds and... Good sounds is subjective, so right. I really can't talk my shit on that. But for me, you know, I, as someone that makes good sounds and I sample good sounds and I have an ear to particular sounds and I know what I like and what just puts me in a calming mood or whatever, you know, my my my, my brand, when people hear 009 or they say, uh, or, you know, a 009 ass beat type shit, you know, they, they know what to expect. So it's always just been like, it's been part of me, man. It's just... Moving and grooving with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's always been that. Yeah, I always say music is like medicine. It is. Um, it is. because, and even Kanye said it. He said, um, in the song "Gorgeous," he said, "Black, like, I don't know the exact line, but our music is like the the, the spiritual slave music that we've carried that's evolved into such a new form now. Oh yeah. Think about how long hip hop has." thrive and survive the men with beaten heart or the dagger Whoa. in the lives of black people. Oh, my, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, what? You cut me off. You the artist. Well, ahead. hip-hop by itself is fairly young. Our parents are older than hip-hop. Most definitely. But I perfectly agree with that. I mean, not even through hip-hop. I mean, some of those sense, sentiments and feelings of a, oppressed people definitely shows in the music, whether it's in pulp, country, rock blues jazz alternative R&D, you know what i mean the pains and, and you know that's why we feel it that's it you know whether it's from black people or oppressed asians or or you know gay people making music feeling how oppressed they are like you know it's you're gonna feel it if if it's from there type shit that's a fact ultimately right that's a fact and it's like it's not th- something we can escape everyone's gonna hear music of some sort though it doesn't have to be sounds on a beat yeah, I mean, because music is rhythm, so it, it could be any. It could be of the sound. swaying of trees. Yes, yes. Maybe like, or the, the <coughs> pattern of the waves crashing. It's it's not. That's music. 
anything's instruments, you know what I mean? So I find it, oh, before you ask that question, mm -hmm. I, I definitely find it super interesting you said modern, uh, what did you say you said? I said pain sp music? Spiritual, uh, uh, it's spiritual slave music. Spiritual slave music. I forget who I told this to the other day, but I was like, drill music is like war music. You yes. know what I mean? With the beating drums and, yes. you know what war I'm saying? Time. Like, if you about to play a game or you about to play football, you about to go to war, you don't want to listen to no Drake. You want to get your blood boiling. You want to be mad at something. So when so, you do that, what what are you tapping into with through the form of music? Because music is what? It plays the gateway for you to step into something else, right? A different mode, a different aspect of yourself. For some people. Hyped up. For some people. You know, for as the people. consumer, it definitely is because then you're, you're curious about all the ops and the gangs and the neighborhoods or particular thing this rapper might have going on. Now you're kind of... Naturally, I'm curious about it. You know, young so-and-so says so-and-so and so on a fly-ass beat. I like the beat. I like the song. Now, maybe I can't particularly relate to the song, but I might be curious about certain elements of the song. And depending on who you are, that's a, a very wide gateway. Some people are in this shit for a... And then they make music reflecting how they live in. Um, it's not a expression is never a bad thing until it hurts other people. But a song doesn't hurt people. Um, I ultimately I leave it alone because these 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 niggas is in the streets, so they making music, street music pertaining to certain shit that a nigga just listens to the music can't relate to. So for certain shit, you know. It comes with what it comes with. But for other people that's not in that shit to get inspired by it and start repeating certain sayings or phrases or, or certain dances, you know what I mean? That's where I feel like as a culture, like, you know what I mean? That shit not really cool because now we glorify certain shit that ultimately kills our people. And then you got niggas talking about, oh, put the guns down and stop the violence. But we listen to songs promoting the very same thing. Or we consume a lot of content pointing light at certain things or you know what I mean um, so that's also what comes with that spiritual <laughs> reflection talk to music, hate you know what I mean? no so it's, what you, what you just did is you illuminated the double edged sword I presented it in one way where it could have been looked at as something not Completely wrong fine by the book it's okay you know you know what I mean it's waking people, people up expression and then completely brainwashing people you know, self-control, accountability. I, I tweet about these things and it always, you know, looks like, oh, you hate black people. But I feel like I'm... 009, tell the truth to people who want to I'm hear. realistic, you know. I understand the whole, you know. Um, Stay a realist. <laughs> Stay a realist. People that look... I mean, well, all people. It doesn't matter color because I'm not black for one. I'm brown, so we're going to talk about black people. Call me brown, but I'm not brown. I'm 009, right? And, um... We're all people, and all people should hold accountability. But I specifically belong to a group of people that look like me, so I can specifically speak on my group's issues. You know what I'm saying? Like, if white people got a problem, with white people, whatever. You know what I mean? I'm only gonna speak on my experiences with white people. I'm not yeah, going not, to attribute it to you the You got whole. your shades on. You're not worried about. But that. for my people, it's like, bro, stand up. Like, real nigga, this, real nigga, that. You want to be a boss, a big man, or you want to be that bitch or whatever part of my language, but, you know, I mean, you got to pay the bills in all aspects. You know, we have to be accountable where we're hurting ourselves or where, you know, we're doing things that's not always fly. And, you know what I mean? I'm not perfect, you know? This shit ain't, you know, <laughs> it ain't good, but I'm realistic about it. God forbid if something happens to my lungs, I'm not going to be like, damn, why, God, you know what I'm saying? I'm... You know, I, did, I brought this upon myself. That's a lot of so That's how I feel about that. Mm -hmm. you know? So, what does your discography look like? A lot of beat tapes. Um, and by a lot, probably like, I think I dropped like two or three. And I have like two projects with like songs, like actual songs that I produce. Um, I think I probably got like, I got a bunch of singles out. I've been dropping shit since like 2017, 2018. I think I got a valid discography. I'm on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube Music, SoundCloud, you know what I mean? I'm pretty... Everywhere there's to be heard. All there. the official major channels, you know what I mean? I don't really bother with all the underground shit because... Um, you don't fuck with DistroKid? No, I use DistroKid, but that's not really a platform. That's just what 
puts you on Apple Music and Spotify. Right. What I mean by that is, um, you don't see Ferrari placing billboards to buy used cars on on credit installments. Yeah, because only they only want a certain type of people coming okay, to. Okay, so you know what I mean. I'm only, you know what I mean. I don't. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> no more needs to be said. And so, what do you try to give your audience with your music? What is it they can expect from you? What is what is your gift to them in your expression of self? A way into your mind? A visual of life they've never seen? A feeling they can't really describe, but they know it makes them feel a certain way every time they play it? What would you say? That's a great question. Props to you. I've never really asked myself that. I think... Um, I think I ask myself those questions subconsciously when I make the content and I know I have to dig deep and show something or give something. But <clears throat> I think um, ultimately it's an experience. Um, it's my experience. It's my story. Um, through all the mediums, through all the different things I put in the world, you know, whether it's a tweet or whether it's a vlog, whether it's pictures, whether it's a conversation, you know, whether it's me making my own t-shirts and posting stickers and in the streets and shit, you know, um, it's me, it's double or not. I'm a pretty, once you get to know me, you, and no, not you, but in general, when people get to know me, I'm always surprised by my, my quiet and pretty laid back nature. Um, and it usually leaves the question of, you know, why did he do that or why, how does he, da 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 so. It's all just what's in my head, how I'm feeling, all, everything, everything you see, how I carry myself. I mean, even the name is, it's it's showing what I see myself as and what I'm giving to you, you know what I mean? Certain people get 009, certain people get Fly, certain people get Rashad, but some people don't get any of that, you know? So it really depends on, you know, who it is and how I'm feeling, really. This shit is an extension of me. What I can tell is you're a very calculated person because for you to give that answer, you have to know yourself very well. You just separated yourself into three different identities. You said Rashad, 009, and Fly. So every time you chose what character you were going to be, people got a different interaction for you. So imagine what you can give your audience with your music if you can break down the knowing of yourself that deeply. But you'd have to go through suffering to get there. That's what people don't get. Why you have to fall in love with the process is the pain and suffering makes you a G. It makes you so aware you just become cutthroat because now you know how to navigate so well. Spot on. See Spot on. Saying? Who who was it? There's a couple quotes out there. One is um art is suffering. One quote is life is suffering. And there's one more. Uh, there's another one, but I mean, I think most people that get to a, a point where they go through some real shit in life, it's like, yeah, like life is beautiful and life is ugly, and you have to learn from both. People love the good, but I guess as I mean, the I'm bad not, is inevitable. It, it makes for a great story, personally. <laughs> You know what, I mean? like, what I find crazy about life is life is constant work and you'll never fully figure it out. Mm -hmm. And that's the key to, I think, living better. We're not supposed to. Okay? <laughs> because if we're supposed to, then we wouldn't have to go through this physical, physical experience. Physical experience. We already it established defeats that the we're, whole we're purpose. more than just these physical beings, right? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude, like, people would be like, oh, I spent my whole life researching that's the meaning the of whole... death. It's like, dude, like, this is this. That's what you give it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, <laughs> you get it, bro. So, what is your process of creating and what did you learn most from the process? Because everyone has a certain way to get in the groove, right? You hear NBA players and they're talking and they say when they get in the zone, they don't remember after it happens. They just want to keep playing. They're in the fourth quarter and they hit a clutch shot and they had to play defense and they got a chase down block, but that's when they played their best. Because they've learned to adapt 
and be, uh, perform the best it's under the pressure. Feeling, bro. You're just flowing. Yeah. So what they call it, the zone, but they don't even remember it after it happens <clears throat> because it was, it was out of their control. It's instinct. So the same way you get to make all your beats, you know exactly how you have to feel internally for 009 to make 009 type of yeah. shit. Yeah, exactly. Like I said before, I'm, I'm, I'm not McDonald's, okay? Um... <laughs> Why McDonald's? <laughs> Cause I'm not ready to order twenty four seven. That's a fact. You can't just hit me up and get beats. You know what I mean? Ooh, y'all heard what he said. I'm not McDonald's because he's you can't order twenty four seven. That's another catchphrase. You can't just for something else. <laughs> you know what I mean, again with the Ferrari reference, you know, um, my beats are expression of me. So there might be a, uh, a string of days, or maybe weeks or months that maybe not months, but. A long period of time where I don't feel like making beats just because, you know, life, you know. So then when you get to that point of not making beats because you're going through life and as of right now... But it's good not or bad, priority. just life. At most any definitely, given, at, at any given no, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is it that motivates you the most from that place? Motivates, man. It's not much, man. I want to put out fly shit. I know what the long goal is, man. I'm building a brand. I'm building an empire. So maybe and it motivates... Different isn't the right word. What inspires you? What inspires me when I go on Instagram and I see my man's supposed to fly a beat and I'm like, oh, fuck, now I want to make beats. Mm -hmm. And now a new song come out and I fuck with the beat, I fuck with the song, I watch the video and I'm like, oh, this beat's hard. And then analytic mode, and you know, kick in and I'm like, yo, now I can, now I can block out the lyrics and hear all the parts of the beat and I'm like, okay, is this a sample? Did he key this? What? Is this a synth? Is this a pad? Is this a guitar? Okay, now let me hear the hi-hat pattern. Is it you know what I mean some hi hats is just like t -t 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 -t. super simple you know what I mean it's all the mixing and shit how are the snares are they super loud or do they use the snares as claps are the snares the accents you know what I mean I, I'm break that down how are you able to do that to, <laughs> to, to put the pieces together and, and, and categorize them in different sections like right there when you're asking these questions right you, you you know when you ask yourself questions you get answers but yeah. it's because you ask so yeah. how are you able to break down all those little parts and categorize <clears> them <throat> you said hi-hat pattern you have to be looking for something so specific to that exact part of the uh, of the song because it makes up a component of it all together so well, it's you... easier for me because i make beats so i'm already you know kind of right between, but there's so... a process to that so what what how do you understand what you're doing when it comes to hearing. because I want to, I, I want to make flash shit, and the only way to make flash shit is to understand how the flash shit works, mm. whatever that flash shit may be. That's it right there. Simple. If you want to know, if you like it, you're gonna, you're gonna want to, you know what I'm saying? That's. I... But people can like a thing for one or two, three days, and they let it go. So yeah, well, that's that's them. Those people don't build empires. You know what I mean? Or maybe they do, just for not that thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. Some. Beats is my everything. I, that's how I started, and that's a big part of Double O Nine, you know, content backbone and the expression part of me. But um, again, I do other shit. You know, I'm I'm creative in other ways, and even just being able to appreciate and understand different stuff, like the examples I gave before, like graphic design. All these posters are a form of art. You know, the artist or the team wanted to put out a certain, you know, Jay Z wanted like a businessman. <laughs> You know what I mean? Always. Outcasts want to look funky. You know what I mean? Frank Ocean wants to be nostalgic. That, that, that's, you know what I mean? We see it through the branding and how they choose to put it up. So just even being able to understand that process and what it means and the different audiences and stuff, that's still art. You know, that's just the math. That's just the numbers. That's just the analytics. That's, that's, that's the real sauce. What people like is the finished product. But when you're in the shit, the finished product ain't shit because you already so busy building that through its process, you already appreciate it. You know what I mean? Like I... You're very insightful, bro. Let me move on before we start going on the answer for 20 minutes, <laughs> for bro. Sure, for Sharing sure. a lot of information and I'm, and, and I'm being enlightened as we speak. Right. So, what would you tell someone who's looking to start their careers and get to where you're at? And not necessarily comparing to you in the sense of where you are in a position of security and what you do, but more saying to the, pla the, the place of confidence where you can operate as 009, know exactly what you're trying to express and what your audience needs at the current time. How does a person get to the place where 
they can tap in the groove if, if, if they want it enough. They can get into that mode where everything flows naturally and they're focused and they're making beats every day and they're hearing new things. They're get, been, like getting inspired, networking. How do they get there if they wish to start their career? Excuse me. Um, if you can think of the most simple way to break it down. You got to know yourself is number one. Because I'm different than you and whoever's watching this. Um, you just got to know yourself, what you like, what you don't like, who you are, and what you're, what you're going to call yourself to the world, and how you go about that. You know, how you carry yourself, and blah, blah, blah. And the second thing is you got to go hard. Got to go hard. And I think everything else kind of falls into place. Because when you go hard in whatever you do, you fall into a pattern, you know, you recognize it, but most importantly, other people recognize it. So then it becomes a bigger thing than what you're doing, you know what I mean? And from that, that's where the magic happens, you know? That's where the creativity and networking and, and, and realizing that you have something, but you only get there once you go hard and you put in that work and put in the groundwork and shit, you know? I'm only comfortable to speak like this because I definitely put a couple of years of just paying attention and trying stuff and just knowing what worked for me and then just doing it. Just gotta do it. It's always a process, man. And that's what it takes to really go through just it. Just gotta do that shit. <laughs> and that's the hardest part, huh? And so, where do you see yourself in five years? It's a cliche question, so now let me ask you in a different way. I used what? to hate that question, but now I love that question. Um, and, and I like to do this personally. I only say it's cliche to go along but what I really always want to ask is what do you see yourself becoming in five years because you can see yourself somewhere and never work to attain that visualization well my mom and my stepdad used to always ask me what I want to do what I want to be and I used to tell them that I don't see me a specific occupation or a person I want to be like there, there was always multiple things of multiple people, and I always wanted to be me, so... I'm me, you feel know I me? Mean? And that's what I want to be like in the future, like the kind of world I built for myself. The, sh the shit that I want is what I'm already doing now, and I'll, I'll explain. Um, creative, just in person and, and uh, expression, uh, multifaceted and hobbies, and, and lifestyle, and work, and, and my social networks, you know what I mean? Just a well-rounded person, experience a lot of shit, see a lot of stuff. Um, I'm gonna be 30 in five years, so I wanna be on grown man timing, you feel me? I wanna have all my businesses official, you know? I, I, have, uh, I have certain paperwork, and uh, you know, uh, EIN for one of my businesses, you know, tax number, um, I got a business bank account, but I want it to be all official. Um, I want all my businesses to have their own separate holdings, as in um, financial diversification. Like the same way me as a person, I can hold stock and wealth in different forms, like stock, crypto, cash, gold, real estate. I want my businesses to own assets as well, you know what I mean? Um, I want to have an office, because I do a lot, you know, creative consulting, I manage my businesses. So I actually want to have like a personal office for me and all my shit so you know when people meet and they go, oh come by we can talk about that um you know simple i want to be able to live my hobbies i want to be financially secure um and i'm on the road to that now so in five years i don't see any reason why it won't be so i love the confidence man like even just hearing that i can almost see it for you that's that's what i want that's how i'm living that's the type of people I surround myself with now, that's the type of information I consume on the daily. Those are the things I talk about, those are the things I think about. I shall be done. People like you are rare, man, so keep keep doing what you're doing, dog, and you'll affect yeah. a lot of people. People like me build empires, and not many people build empires, so. <laughs> that's what I like to think. Oh, yeah, he had to throw a little spice on there. <laughs> so, look, where do you see the state of the New England hip hop rap? music scene in five years. Do you see it bringing into the industry? Does New York count in New England? No. New Hampshire, Maine, I, yes. Massachusetts, yes. Rhode Island, Connecticut? New England, okay. truest, in its truest sense of the word. 
okay, well, let me break it up. You know, Boston, I live in Boston, so I'm not going to speak on other shit. But I do be in CT often, and they definitely have a scene. But Boston has a lot of potential. There's a lot of characters, there's a lot of different art, hip hop or not, music or not. You know, there's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different shit going on. Uh, what I think Boston lacks is that unification, that, that structure, you know, that pipeline to kind of industry standard, you know, when you go to New York, you go to different cities in Florida, you go to LA or even Houston, even Philly, you know what I mean? There's a history of certain, uh, um, you know, art institutions that have served and catered to and housed and supported certain scenes and have served as a pipeline to some of these scenes or some of these local acts becoming signed artists and getting crazy exposure and getting noisy interviews because, you know, ultimately Vice and Complex and Noisy and all these underground publications, they're actively looking for some sort of structure, some sort of organization, you know what I mean? Um, Boston has the potential to be big. Like I said, there's a lot. There's a lot of Boston people in other big cities. You know, there's a lot of pipelines. So I just think people have to, um, as a non-Bostonian saying this, I just think um, we need more people like, like Rob, um, or even like Thrill, you know, that serve as a institution it's a foundation to support the scene. It can't just be the individuals, you know. That's what I. The infrastructure is gonna. Yeah, it's, it's not an easy answer. You know, yeah, that's a bear. Every couple, we every three, every couple summers, we go through the cycle of artists that drop a couple singles and just disappear. That's a fact. Whether they go to LA, whether they go to jail, whether they die, whether they just stop making music, you know what I mean. The consistency. You know there. what I mean. So what is the most substantial moment? What is your braggadocious, most, most most braggadocious moment in your career as 009? The memorable one, the one that, you know, you, you, you could tell stories about. Okay. Uh, well, for one, I have a couple stories. I have a couple moments like that. But tell me one, a good one. Okay. The most substantial moment, the one that you carry with you every day. And it always reminds you to keep being double or nine, keep being fly. Oh, okay. So on some real life shit, my connections, my casual network, my friends. I have friends in other countries, you know, like I have friends uh, uh, in Holland, um, in Montenegro, uh, Iran. You feel me? I got homies in different states. So uh, I got homies that's in the industry, you know, that's make videos for certain rapper, rappers I won't name. I got I got friends that sign. My, my big bro, you know, works for the labels and shit. So, uh, shit, bro. My accomplishment is being able to be active and be in the scene and be able to do fly shit consistently. Uh, not by myself, but without any gimmick or without any fluff, you know what I mean? I'm not selling a life that, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when, when, when rappers, you know... You're rappers, not selling a dream. Yeah, bro, I'm selling fly shit. My version of fly shit. And what makes it fly is that it's real. You know what I mean? You see it. You know, I'm living like that to, to the clothes, to the relationships, to 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 places I go, you know what I mean? To the, to the things that I do for hobbies, you know what I mean? Might seem like a world away for some people, but... I'm not even trying to brag, but certain shit is really a phone call away, bro. Like, yo, what's up, bro? I want to get into this. Or... Yo, where you at? Alright, I'm gonna I'm come link you. Like, there's a world of possibility just within, you know, my network. And that is, is, is you know, that's probably the most flyest thing about it all because, you know, some people pay for these connections, some people work 40 years for some of these connections and, and do the most and, and try to, you know what I'm saying? Just, just to get in a room and just be able to have certain conversations or just to be able to be in contact with certain elements of life, you feel me? And, and the fact that I was able to get there off just being me, being, you know, a decent dude, you know, being someone that way of just turn, you know what I'm saying? Just, that shit's priceless for us. You know what I mean? That's it right there, bro. Be grateful for that because that's your superpower, though, you know I mean? is your network. So, what are your intentions with your career? And what are some of the guiding forces? And what I mean by intentions is... You're gonna leave a lasting impression 
on somebody, no matter what, with <clears throat> art that you're passionate about, the world will, will receive it from you. And take it how they made each and every individual person and left them with something. So when your intentions was some of the guiding forces in your in your in your life. And those were my last two questions for you. Okay. Um for double oh nine, you know, for the for for the brand, uh you know, for the brand and the, and the business and the content and stuff. Again that I want that to serve as like a beacon for creativity and, you know, realistic shit. You know what I mean? As in like you don't have to do the most to get your point across or to do some of these things or to travel or to drive certain cars or to you know what I mean? You just have to be yourself and go hard and 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 this is my version of it. There's a million different stories like that of people like making it like, yo, you can do it too or da 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 you know, you go on YouTube and this is how I made a Travis Scott type beater. This is how I photoshopped the Mona Lisa or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, you can do it too. You just got to find your angle and play to it. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 where I want to leave. You know, I want to serve as 009. I was here. I did it. The guy that you knew. The underdog. You know what I mean? And I did it. By being me. By being authentic. And enjoyed every hell of it. Damn. Know? From the good, the bad, the ugly. That's deep. That's some deep game, and it seems so simple, but that that is that is the best I mean, game. I don't got nothing to prove. I'm not here to. Uh, me, you know, I'm gonna do this flash shit, and I'm gonna die with it. Double and, nine, it's fly for real. And, and <laughs> hopefully, you know, hopefully in ten years, fifty years, they're still talking about me like we talk about. Biggie. All the shit that we're talking about right now. You know what I'm saying? We talk about, you know, Babe Roof. We talk about. You know, uh, uh, Abe Lincoln and shit. Like mm. whatever. You know, I want to be talked about for doing fly shit. They gonna remember that or not? For sure. You know. And um, the second question, the motivators. I mean, being realistic, we still have to live in this country. Finance is a big part. So, learning to be financially literate, to have certain friends. I was just, yo, like some some friends have always like kind of traded stock options before it was like a big thing some friends hop into forex some friends hop into insurance so i kind of always had a lot of different friends like yo bro like i'm gonna buy a house in like two years bro like you should start saving up or own some property yo bro you should own some stock yo bro you should keep a minimum of like 500 dollars in your bank account but don't keep everything in your bank account yo bro you should you know own some gold don't buy diamonds you know or Yo, bro, you should uh, work this job and make sure you get a good 401k. You know what I'm saying? So I was multiple ways to kind of just stay ahead of, of, you know, the line. Really. Stay ahead of the curve. Yeah, you know, because that's, if I want to be around for 40 years, you know, you gotta, and, you gotta and play the long fund time. my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this flash shit ain't cheap. Double O nine gave y'all some game. The flash shit day. not cheap. The flash shit <laughs> not free. Work hard, save up, wait your turn, and you can do it too. Don't bullshit. This shit is not easy. Give it up for Double O Nine. I want to thank you for coming to Put in Work Studio, yes, Put in Work TV. Appreciate y'all having me. You man. came here, bro. We had a great conversation. I learned some things about you, and and I, I'm gonna be frankly honest, you, you got it, bro. I mean, like I've seen a fly digger in front of me, so I hope y'all see a fly digger too. So, you know what I'm saying, oh, that's it for the day.